Divine Masculine, I'm here to do your reading. Um, so I was just kind of doing some channeling. I was taking a moment between um, activities, you know, and really doing some thinking about what I could contribute to you guys, because I feel like um, like I'm trying to uh, help help define um, some of the what is going on with these cards? It's just my hands. That's just me. I'm just all over the place right now. Anyway, um, I feel like divine masculine that you've been in transit. Here's family. Okay. I think you've been working on the family unit um, and kind of the, the role of family or the role that you play within the family. Um, which is something that I was picking up on with Divine Feminine, and part of the reason I took a, a brief pause. <laughs> okay, um, this is uh, number 10 and number 15. Number 15 coming out second here. For, for some people, I feel like um, there's a, yeah, it's almost like you're taking off the rose-colored glasses in some aspects, and in others, I think you're putting them on. Um, I think you've been the master of changing how things appear to be. Men are expected, males, divine male, divine man, divine masculine. I'm trying to call you all of those things. Um, because I, that is what it is. It's, a, it's the expectation that's put on those words that has helped you survive. Um, it's the respect of your space, your time, and your energy by your family that gives you pleasure. It's you realizing that your family completely sees you as a victorious survivor, that you keep them afloat, that you support them 100%. It's a family dynamic that I think you take a lot of pride and pleasure in. And as a man, as a male, um, being able to switch fluently between um, kind of the hats that we wear in life or the role that we play is is difficult. And I'm saying we just because um, obviously females have male energy and males have female energy. Um, so that goes, it's a reciprocal relationship in that regard. I'm going to use the um, cartoon deck to see if I can get some specific uh Storylines, storylines going on. By the way, um, we've got 10, 15, 19, and at the top of the read is number nine. So if numbers are relevant to you, then you will know how to apply those. Okay, family. This is coming out with, um, no. there's no burden there. There's no, um, this is a gift basket. Okay, it says for you. And it's left on someone's doorstep. It's something that someone would have dropped off. It's an unexpected little package. I don't think you're going through unexpected or unforeseen things with family right now. I think you're able to see what's going on. And it's a pleasure to you. You don't have a problem with either, you know, um, kind of resituating yourself or like, I don't think you've ever had a problem with that divine masculine. And I don't know. I think... Um, having to keep up the facade that everything is peachy keen and everything is A-OK -okay and um, there's no problems here, nothing to look at here. That's a, a very masculine trait. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to mince words with you about it. Um, that is you victoriously keeping to yourself the situations that could cause um, setbacks, the, uh, keeping to yourself the maybe the fiery feelings or the fiery words that you, it's like having a fire in your stomach to, to say something, but you know that you would lose your victory if you did. Okay. That's what this is. It's, the, it's a rearrangement of self that includes your ability to survive. And if that includes having to, um, I don't know, kind of give up some of what is 
given you pleasure in the past. I think you're willing to do that as a masculine, but I don't think you're willing to do it without um, solid factual evidence and reasoning. Because if, if the reasoning is not solid, then the evidence is not solid either. So it's, um, I think that's what survive. This is you feeling surrounded. There's six different fins sticking out of the water. And they're all like, I just want to say they're like, you know, these are like mutated sharks that have like electrified teeth or something. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is this is really a situation where the spotlight seriously is like directly on you and the hands of God or intervention from a way higher power than you could understand is going to be the thing that lifts and moves you through the, I guess, era of your life that you've had to wear um, rose colored glasses in order to feel pleasure, if that makes sense. Um, you've had to kind of delude yourself a little bit. Um, that's no longer the case. You are not, you're no longer deluded. You have the key to the castle. You've got um, your feelings bottled up in a way that you don't have to question which way you're going to come off to yourself or the world. You've gained confidence in your own face rather than having to mask yourself. You no longer need the war paint. You no longer need the um, superfluous amounts of, uh, yeah, just, just burdensome makeup from things that have taken place in the past, um, from situations that you're just willing, you're ready to go. Like, come on, let's, let's go. Like this is, I, there was a reading that I did. I don't know for who, I don't remember who it was for. Um, it was literally a imagery of a fish jumping from one tank to another. And I feel like that's what's happened here is you've almost, you know, the leap power systems. Um, it's almost like you've taken power and moved your own power to a different location. It doesn't mean that you've lost anything. It's like moving each one of your pieces of furniture to a different house. But you had the movers do it, so you don't have to lift a finger. So at this point, at this point, it's a pleasure for you to kind of take off your mask. It's, it's your pad, it's, this is your pad, your new crib. You know what I'm saying? Like, Oh, you want to come kick it at the pad or you want to come kick it at the crib? That's where you're going. There will be no kissing of frogs, by the way, there. This is just, a, it's a pleasure for you to do that. It's something that you've, you've created space and time for yourself to focus on, appreciate, and learn to, um, like if this was your power animal for the day, if this was your power animal for the day, what strengths and which weaknesses? One of my favorite examples, and I've used it many times, I'm sure I will use it many more times, um, is the poisonous skin on some poisonous dart frogs, okay? Their skin can be used to dip in the tip of it at like an arrowhead, you know, those flint arrowheads, and then used as, you know, if you're an archer, if you're familiar with the sport, um, then, you know, you use it in a, a bow and arrow kind of way. And once you like release it, it goes through the air and obviously hits the target and poisons them alongside, you know, obviously cutting their skin open or causing wounds, flesh wounds and gashes. So anyway, I don't know why that was relevant, but it was. There's the three of, of pentacles. That's the alignment of um, kind of, you know. As above, so below, but also let's be present right here, right now. Okay, that's kind of before and after, and then right here in the middle. So this family situation, I think you're coming together with trying to decrease the burden coming towards your family, as well as for yourself. This is your family members. This is for other people. You're not really worried about that right now, and this is for yourself. So it's like you're D mystifying some things for yourself and for your family. It's like creating a a living record um, or a living, I don't want a testament, right? I, I don't know. It's a, a testament to yourself though. It's just a, a living memoir, if you will. Yes, there's the three of wands. So we now have three of pentacles and the three of wands. That's 33 for anybody who's interested in the numbers. 
um, the victory here is you being able to use mind, body, and soul to contain, contain, or to um, prevent from expansion, prevent from spreading um, negative, like fire all over, you know, okay. You don't want to stop and catch everything else on fire. You want to have a fire in yourself. You want to be passionate. You want to feel that uh, to like go do something and make a, a difference or a change or contribute. Um, that's what life is all about, honestly. So this um idea of survival not being a burden can also be a burden. You, as a man, you don't want things just given to you. I feel like you feel like you need to earn it for some reason. I don't, some of us don't feel that way. Um, some people don't live that way. i uh, feeling as though they're indebted to one another. Um, yeah. Oh, goodness. So here's the tower. And I don't know how this came out. These two just fell on the, the bench next to me. So I'll take both of them in the upright. Okay. We'll just stay positive. Um, stay really positive about things. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I just looked over it and my cat, Ophelia, had both of her paws on this drawer and she was like hanging there, scratching with her feet. Like, you know, obviously the counter or the cabinets are slick. So she was trying to pull herself up, but her little bottom feet were... Anyway, um, that's what this is. It's like, it's... There she goes again, look. I can show you quick. Look at her. Go back. Get down. Hold on. Get down. You know you're not allowed to do that. You're very, very smart. Okay. No, no. Just stay down, okay? I'll get you some treats in a moment. Jeez, you're too smart for your own good, I swear. So this is um a realization. This is you realizing... <laughs> that it strongly doesn't have to be a burden, okay? That's that's part of you dropping the mask. You don't have to wear war paint because it's not a war out there. I mean, we can go check the news, but I'm pretty sure there's no war. There might be some changes or some um, brand new aspects to the world that you never knew existed. But wouldn't you prefer, rather than a draft for a war or, you know, um, gang violence between um the the whatever we're not even gonna go there just gang violence um j and wouldn't you prefer to have discovered a new uh species that has the uh the capability or the poison that's needed to retroact uh the cancer cells or something or aids or hiv or um you know hepatitis or you know what i'm saying like some huge um, wouldn't you prefer to solve world peace or, you know, purify the water? Water for people. Wouldn't that be more of a, an appropriate spirit animal activity for today in particular? Tomorrow is a brand new day and we can start a whole different spirit animal. That's what I'm saying. I, I'm saying that whatever spirit animal appeals to you, I'm not saying this frog, but I'm just saying this frog is exemplary of the fact that you do have to leap for it. You have to keep going, even when things really suck. Even when you feel like you've been, your your crown has been knocked to one side or the other, you still have to, you know, straighten yourself up, reposition, <clears throat> you know, clear your throat a little bit and continue. And it doesn't have to be a struggle. Um, It, it, you know, it doesn't mean that it's going to be easy. I cannot guarantee that, but I can tell you um, this is worth the wait because realizing the struggles that you've had in the past is why it makes it a pleasure to be strong in the future. And it does, I cannot stand people that say, oh, so you really needed the, the struggle in order to be as strong as you are. I don't believe that either. That's a horrible reason to go around trying to make people's lives difficult. Ophelia? Ophelia Jane, get down. She's not going to listen to me right now. So anyway, that's really the um, 
the essence of the read right here. I do also just want to say um, the physical body of Gaia is here. And then I'm going to just push this over so you can see. So are these mushrooms. So I feel like there's a, a way that you can continue to enrich your world or at least um, add interesting nuances that possibly reveal different dimensional complexities to you about how to continue this path that you're on um, in a successful way that will highly um, open your mind or open your eyes, open your world to uh, possibilities that you had not ever considered or that you had not yet even realized were possibilities that you could consider. So um, that's, that's what I've got for you, Divine Masculine. I will take uh, one more deck. Let's do animals. Since we're doing animal spirits, maybe we'll draw some animal spirits that would also like to show up today in <laughs> their own particular way. Interesting. So I was just shuffling and I saw the frog in this deck too come right out. The caribou. So caribou is coming out with family. Kind of a lot. So I'm just going to show you the, the first and last cards. How about that? So this is your family. This is the mantle that you wear for your family. It is a um, an ode to the history, not only of yourself, but of your partner that you have families with. Um, you know, you, you might have several, like some people have several baby moms or several baby fathers. Each one of those people that you've created a life with, that's a mantle that you both carry. And it's something that will be with you for the rest of your life. It's just a part of a major life event, such as giving birth to a child. Um, that's a family event. Um, it may have happened in the past, but it's still there, okay? And I'm kind of speaking also to myself a little bit, but, you know, caribou taking a leap forward. What does that look like? Caribou taking a leap forward led to polar bear. Right in the middle, um, down the victory. Down the victory aisle. Okay, this is a, the polar bear is actually got black skin and a black tongue. This is kind of that, things are not as they appear. So if we're talking about masculines taking off the outside mask, this is a perfect example of not judging a book by its cover. You know, um, things are not always just skin deep. Uh, you, you've got to look way deeper if you want to find a victory and... That's the beauty of um, knowing how to become toothless if you need to in specific situations. Okay, so here we've got the tiger. This one's coming out here with the survival. Ooh, I'm hearing eye of the tiger. Um, this is a... This might just be me personally, um, you know, having memories or projecting my own experience onto this card, but this is the imagery that I get. For a, a Bengal tiger to exist, <coughs> tigers exist in Africa and Asia, much like elephants exist in both places. Um, there's a survival of the fittest that happens here. And that is not only, um, you know, kind of Darwinian a little bit, you know, there's also survival of much strife. And it's strife because people actually want to literally wear the skin of a Bengal. People, you don't see people serving Bengal meat for dinner. People don't eat cat like that, like not big cat. Okay. Nobody wants that. It's like, probably pretty tough or lean. I mean, they're really extraordinarily muscular and powerful animals. This is a big cat, huge cat. One of the most large cats you can encounter, right? That is a survival aspect or a survival trait, but not when they're that beautiful. The beauty of this tiger 
is actually what kills it the most often. Because poachers, they don't just like poached eggs. They like to poach skin. Anything that is the outer layer of, it's like, you know, our dermatology, our dermatological uh, casing is our skin. It's your epidermis is showing. They can't help that their epidermis is showing either. But just like this, this is the, that's the lesson from the polar bear. Don't judge this regal creature because it's a Bengal tiger. Don't try to poke its eyes out. Don't poke it, period. You're not going to like the outcome. It's just going to be like a whole big oh no situation where you're like, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to poke you. Is that lions and tigers and bears? Oh my. This is like a whole bunch of oh no, don't touch it. Oh my. That's quite the tiger. And then a whole bunch of eye of the tiger. It's almost like the tiger is going to wink at you and then you're dead. And that's like the last thing you ever see is a winking tiger. Hey, don't tell, don't say I didn't warn you. Okay. <laughs> um yeah here's the snow leopard is at the bottom of the deck here i'm gonna shuffle but they have the same problem people want to wear their skin also it is not a very nice thought to think oh let me run for my life today because oh oh people are trying to wear my actual skin itself literally it gives a whole new A whole new kind of perspective to the animal kingdom when you think about being in the animal shoes. Pretty sure they're glad they don't wear shoes because they're like, now you can't even pretend to be me, right? But let's just pretend someone wanted to wear your skin. This is the peacock, by the way. I never really thought about it, but this bird suffers the same issues. So do the, the antlers, the mantle right there, these ones get poached for those. The polar bear gets poached also for its, its skin, its skin and its, its feathers. All of these animals, excluding the frog, I don't think frogs are necessarily hunted specifically for poison dart fuel or, you know, um, ammunition. I just think it's uh, something that happens. So... I don't know. I'm going to let you make up your mind. I'm not in the position to really speak for men or males or masculine, but I do hope this helps you with pinpointing or um, setting your sights on something that will help you. Uh, I, I do think it's interesting that there's so many eyes on the tail of a, a peacock, and this was at the top of the reading with pleasure for you. Whole bunch of eyes is a something that you're now used to. So don't let that pressure of people watching you or critiquing your family or critiquing what you're doing um, dissuade you from exactly the trajectory that you're on because that's something that um, it's something you need to continue to pursue, not only for yourself, but so that you do continue to have a strong position. The tower card did come out with that strength card at the top of the read as well. So remember who you are, that it's a pleasure to wear your own skin. This is a lion. That's why I was saying lions and tigers and bears. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so we'll, we'll just say it. There's lions and tigers and bears coming right out, okay? This is a, I'm not scared of lions and tigers and bears. Don't be scared to love or to um, kind of let some of your lighthearted energy out. It's okay for you to have fun while you are in the midst of victoriously surviving, whether that feels like you're being punished and surviving through it, or whether that just means that you're um, surviving physically, that you've created a, a vessel for yourself that you are now able to enjoy. I think you should. There is not one reason under the sun that I can um, 
that I would ever tell you not to do such. So, I think you should definitely do such. And uh, I hope that that was helpful. Hope it was very, very um, eye-opening, I suppose. Eye-opening on the best levels, of course. But anyway, till next time. Toodaloo.